We are live. We are live. Uh, good morning, everyone. Well, it's morning here in Edinburgh, a beautifully sunny day. You know, one of those <coughs> October days when it's all crisp by Mark Cousins, and there's the top of Timo Langer's head. I don't know if you can see it, Timo Editor. Good morning, Hello. Timo. Hello. And what we're doing here is a collaboration with Timo and me and the great composer Linda Buckley and uh, the great sound designer Anya Prisgoda and a photographer Jenna, Gemma Thorpe and we're funded by Creative Scotland and we're um, working closely with our friends at the Wilhelmina Barnes Graham Trust. And um, if you joined us yesterday at, at any point you will have seen what we're trying to do. What we're trying to do is um, edit uh, try to create an enveloping experience for an audience in the fruit market gallery from the 4th of November. The audience will go into a dark space and we'll have four huge screens and on those screens will be projected big images and there'll be lots of sound and lots of music. But are we editing in that way? No, we are not. We're editing on a tiny screen. So we're having to use our imagination a lot to try and upscale what we're doing, but also um, imagine all the different directions. Isn't that right, Timo? I mean, we're just looking, we're editing in four little quadrants, but they, so it's a big feat of imagination. It is, but yeah. yeah. But it's, it's worth it, isn't it? And then because we can't, the screens aren't up yet, so we can't go in there and do it live. And um, I quoted yesterday that line from William Shakespeare, Henry the Fifth, eke out our imperfections with your thoughts and make imaginary puissance. So that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to eke out this very small experience that you'll see some of today and turn it into something epic. And the theme, the theme of this piece of art is epiphany. And what is an epiphany? And you know, what does it do to your neuro neurochemistry? What happens in your life if you suddenly have a moment that feels like a threshold. Once you cross that threshold, are you changed? Or um, actually, once you've achieved this dream state, as it were, um, uh, is there any going back? So that's the theme. And yesterday, what we did is we established the sort of world of the story. We're in the Alps, and we looked at the conventional way of looking at the Alps and painting the Alps, etc. And then we introduced our central character, which is a woman at two ages of her life, when she's an older lady and when she's a younger lady. And what happens is that she goes, she starts to talk to herself. The older woman talks to the younger woman. And that's where we are so far. Is that right, Timo? It is, yeah. So That's Timo's it. going to share his timeline and you can see us working and chatting and doing whatever else. Th those of you who are new to editing, you'll see that there are four lines of video here, timelines of video, plus then T when Timo does a caption, he needs to put that on another line. So does that mean you've got eight channels of video there, Timo? Uh, well... I do have eight where something's on it, yeah. Yes. Yep. And also, how many channels of sound do you have? Uh, 16. So 16. Two, for, two for each uh, uh, visuals channel. We have two sound channels. That's quite a lot to keep to keep in our heads. And so... Well, I think it's not like in a normal film, you have lots of channels as well. <laughs> like a little bit of a challenge is here because we need to isolate them later. And yes. just work on them. So we're just doing four screens on one at the moment, and then we need to isolate them and do one at a time and like frame everything properly and whatever. And I need to then take, like, just make sure I take just the things that are relevant for that screen yes. over. Yes. So what what we also have to do is just be very vigilant and where we put things so we can just easily. I named here screen one and text one. So I know that is everything that we need for the screen one. Yes. And then the same, I actually mislabeled the sound because we needed more sound yesterday. I haven't fixed that yet, but I know that I just need to take the first four sound layers over. Yes. So it's, it's not very complicated. You just need to be quite organized um, <laughs> otherwise you have a big i find it quite complicated and what we should say is if you'll hear us today if you're watching any of this refer to one two three and four uh, screen one is top left screen two is top right timo's indicating it with his cursor screen three is bottom right and screen four is bottom left 
And so I think we should proceed. I have my script here. I couldn't find my script yesterday, but today I've stuck it all on a big piece of paper. So this is the script. So I know where we're at. I think we're about a third of the way. Oh yeah, thank you, Timo. So I think it's a big, big sheet of paper like that. Yeah. Um, and I think we're almost a third of the way through, which is very good. We work fast and efficiently. Although we could get slow today, who knows? So Timo, let's see where we left it off yesterday. Oh yes, so we've got her, we've got them. What was the last thing she said? I have in paintings. Right. Okay, could we just go back? Because there's one thing that we missed, I thought last night, Timo. Do you remember when we took one of her major paintings and moved it between four screens? So it's back a bit, back a bit. Yes, this yeah. one. Okay, so what I realize is we should do exactly the same thing with the music. Right, okay. So you've got music lying running there, Linda's music, haven't you? Yes. On all four, yeah. Yes, so let's, let's mix the music through to each screen. So it jumps with the picture? Yes, yes. Yeah, okay. Maybe, maybe yeah, jump, a jump would be good, actually, I think. Yeah, I think a jump would be good, and that and for the, so that means the audience will be not only seeing the image move from there to there, but will be hearing the music move as well. That, that's the first time we'll have done this. Obviously, we're going to play with people's sense of space here and screen direction, but this is the first time we'll have so explicitly used the sound to do that. So should it still start on all, or should it just start at... So we, we bring the music in earlier. Yes. We bring the music in here. Yes, and it's on all screens, yes. And it's on all screens. Yes. So should it still do that and just yes. jump when the yes. picture stuff and then be on all again? Indeed, that's exactly what should happen. Yeah. I think that'll be a lot of fun. Yeah. <clears throat> See, like now this is uh, where, I, where I, so one, two. I think you'll regret saying, you said earlier that it's not very complicated. Well, <laughs> like that kind of stuff gets you a bit, yeah. Gets the brain cell going first thing in the morning. I zoomed, I zoomed with Anya this morning, sound designer Anya, just telling her how we're going. And I think what we're going to do is Friday afternoon, if anybody still wants to be, if you're still with us on the Badger Cam on Friday afternoon, we might, it might be sound day. So we might specifically look at any audio issues if, if that works out on Friday. But we're not there yet, obviously. So that's number three. No. Yes. Three. By the way, Timo, Anya has just sent us some more audio this morning, I think, into the Dropbox, and the only what she sent is more <sighs> breathy stuff. So I don't know. At some point, if you can imp uh, take that in, that would be good. Okay. <coughs> <clears throat> uh. So are you basically cutting bits of music out, Timo. Yes. Yeah. 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 You're cutting the music on the three screens that the image is not. Is that right? Yeah. <laughs> so I need to double check, like, sorry, this is a very boring start, but this is the kind of thingy mingy. Yeah. So screen one has screen one music, screen two has no music, so I messed it up. <laughs> <laughs> Those of you who are new, those of you who are new to editing who haven't seen editing before, this is an unusually complicated thing we're doing. We're in effect making four films at once. 
So if this seems to you a bit complicated and you're but you're interested in editing, don't let this put you off. It's basically a very creative process. And um, yeah, the most exciting bit of the filmmaking. Obviously, when we watch this, because you guys watching this, if you're watching, <coughs> you'll only hear it from your two speakers. So you won't be able to hear the effect of what Timo's doing here. He's moving the music around between around the four screens, but you and he and I will not be able to hear it yet. You'll have to come to Fruit Market and see it live to do that. So one is that I still haven't fixed that, but I need a, I need one, two, three, four. So I need that one. Uh, not here to there. So one, two. Three, yeah, four. I think that's a bit, and I think if we listen to it now, you shouldn't hear. I mean, you, actually, you should hear a difference because the volume should change because it's only one track instead of four anymore. Okay, okay. But then when we do when we do the final mix, we don't want yeah. it to change, yeah. I mean it will change a little bit if you think it's come from four sides and then it will yeah. come from one. Yeah. But hopefully we, be... can, hopefully we can whack up the sound on each yeah, yeah. screen so it overall it doesn't go quiet. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, I'm not hearing anything. I'm not hearing anything, Timo. Ay, ay, ay. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Here we go. <laughs> you hear now? Yes, yes. Yeah. Okay, so technically that works. Obviously, that needs yes, some work. Yes, and, uh, yes. It's gonna, in terms of storytelling, it works. Yeah. I was a kind of, what do you think of that line, a kind of hemorrhage? Do you know what I mean when I wrote? <laughs> I can't remember exactly what I meant when I, oh, no, I can remember what I meant. Um, you know, when you climb up really high, you, you get a nosebleed sometimes. Yeah. And I think that it's kind of, I was thinking, you know, that, it's almost like a brain bleed or something. So that's what I meant. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, should I try and fix the volume at all? Or no. should we just leave that? There's no point. Is yeah. it? There's no point. We'll just take I mean, not time. really. I just stick, I just stick a little dissolve transitions on here. So audio pop so much. Yeah. For those of you who are watching in here, click there when we get to the last piece of music. And so Timo's adding a little dissolve up from 
Okay. Now, okay. So then let's just play it from here, Timo. We're still on the main piece of music that Anya wrote, piece number five, like a huge Scotland, which is appropriate because we're getting to the um, central bit of the film here. So just let's watch from here and see if it's working storytelling wise. <clears throat> yeah. One sec. Sorry, Timo. What's the last thing she said? Did she say, my eyes fell? A kind of hemorrhage. And my, and my eyes, eyes fell, fell and so. And so okay, yeah. so that's her eyes. Okay, gotcha. <clears throat> should we put... Should we put some... Feet on ice sound over this. Um, or, or, or are we in a slightly more dream state than that? You think that's that's what I was thinking. Maybe, and um, maybe we're a bit. It's a bit too dreamy for that too. Yeah. You could have other sound. You could have a plinkly sound or something. Yes, but... Let's do that. Let's do that because it needs something else. I think, but we're not in a real space anymore. We're in a kind of we're in a sort of psychic space inside her head now, I think, but, yeah. but the sound of Anya's music from one of the cave, you know, she's given us music of drips in a cave and that would be good because, you know, so the metaphor there is that her, uh, Willie's mind is like a cave in a way. Yeah. So I'm just looking at the... Yes. Ice melting, maybe something like that. Yes. Now we're going to use the main ice whip melting because without giving, well, I'm, I will give away the ending of this. When we get to the end of this, we're going to see that the glacier is basically gone. So we'll we'll hear melting ice, etc. But ooh, I felt like that. Is that too much? Do you think? I think that might be too much. Okay. Yeah, I think that's good melting sound for the end, actually. That's the yes. ambience. Keep that in the end. So what else What else have you got? Well, have you listened to Ambient Underground Cave, Norway? That's the one I just played. I think that's good for the end. Okay. I guess this one is good for the end as well. Yeah. That's Ice Misk. What about Breath? The breath work here. I think I think maybe just this, this ice melting would work. Okay, try that. <coughs> um on all screens. Yes. Yes. There are moments here when we really want the audience to feel that we're between her ears, you know, we're right inside her psychic space. And this is one of these moments. Is that six minutes we've cut? Five forty-four. Good. So we're more than a third of the way through. Okay, and let me just uh, ease that in a bit. Yeah. And then I think the level could be down a little bit as well, don't you? It's a wee bit too high. Yeah.
hear the tone, right? Can you? No. So when you're moving one track up like that, you can move them all at once. Is that right? So if I if you if click I on select one, yeah. But if, I, if I do an in and out point, yes, then it selects all of them. Oh, great. And paintings so this is the this is the key feed line as we say you know you know uh she said i have described that day and i've been describing it for 50 years basically so this is a moment timo where we can go wild we need a, a montage of lots of painting moments here okay and the question is should the music change or should we <laughs> i think probably yeah if, yeah. it, if it morphs into something else. Yes. So what what we just had uh high drone, like a huge Scotland high drone. Uh high so we've got four options here. We've got high cello, low cello, low drone. J just play that some of those other ones, Timo, and we'll listen and decide which one we want to use, or we might use several of them. So this is all. This is what? All. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, let's use all then. So that's Linda's giving us all the mixes together. <coughs> this is our title, title song, isn't it? Yeah, that's it. That's great. We want we want high and low here. This is the full Ooh. spectrum. This is the full spectrum of her imaginative experience. central moment i think yeah. so timo what we're going to do just as we were talking about anya is she doing a sound mix for this for well us? that's you and you and she are going to discuss that um, but she can if we need to do it yes yes i think it would be good yes. just to get the like because it's yeah just to get the levels right and everything and yes. make sure everything corresponds nicely with each other Yes, and I think Anya is going to come next week when we are we do our final edit in Fruit Market itself, and there she will be able to, to will be able to really decide on levels and things, you know, in the space. And she's going to bring her laptop with her, and she can make some final adjustments in the in situ. Okay. So. Uh, yep. Yeah. So we've got this line I have in paintings, and that should just be in one quadrant like that in black. And then for this next sequence, we're going to have paintings in all four quadrants, Timo, moving around, you know, like moving. So different things at different places. And so the audience should feel wherever I look, I'm seeing something new. Okay, yeah. So that's, of course, the folder called close-ups of paintings. Yep. 
what we don't want, Timo. So we can use anything here except the images with circles in them because we've got a sequence coming up where, where we're looking at how Willie used the hole in the glacier again and again. So anything. Sorry, anything but what? Anything but the... Um, if we we do want to use a picture that's got the circle in it so there are all fine that's 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 these are all fine all good all good so it's just when we see an actual see there's a circle so we don't want to use that last one for example okay tell me had you have you combined, I've got two folders, one that's called close-ups of paintings and one's called London and Wolverhampton. Wolverhampton. Have you combined those into one big? No, I've got close-ups and London and Wolverhampton. Okay. So then this sequence that you're doing now should pull images from both of those folders. Okay. And how many images and how long? So well, I think, uh, I think, how long is the piece of music? It's really long, isn't it? We're talking about at least a minute. Okay. How, how much music is there there? <clears throat> yeah, a lot. A lot. Uh, and is there, is there an ending of the music in any way? Should we aim for a kind of out? Or? It's 150. 150. Well, I would leave it long, leave all that music in, because I think we're going to have this lovely mon montage of Willie paintings, but then she's going to start speaking again, and the music can could still be going. So leave that, leave the music 150. Okay. Um, do you want to just do you want me to just pick out paintings or should we maybe look at them and you just say, oh, I'll take that one, take that one. Or... Okay, yeah. I, I mean... take that one and that one and that one <laughs> and that one. Um, yeah. But like, we don't want them from the same painting, do we, and the same? Yeah, I think we do, Timo. We, okay. want a sense, we want a sense of some of these images, like that one, for example, is nearly the whole painting, but that's a close-up, obviously. So, But I think we want to do that. We want to give us have a sense of jumping closer to the canvas. Okay. So I think you're really free here. Okay. But do use the London and Wolverhampton ones as well because they're particularly nice. Oh, one thing I would like you not to do is use the drawings because we're coming to the drawings in a moment. But so I'll tell you, if I see you using a drawing, I'll say don't use that one. Okay. And just anything close up, wide shots, everything. Close up, wide shots, anything. Just and then on all four quadrants, and they should, I guess, change randomly and not all at once. And things. Yes, exactly. Exactly. You want ping, 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 ping. Well, yeah. Okay. Not, you know, sort of slower than that. I don't know, sort of at least five seconds or something per image. You know, you've got lots of images here. So, yeah, and by drawing, do you mean like what? Which ones are the drawings? Uh, well, I'll see. We only have a. We only have a. Few. You were going to talk about the fact that she probably did one or two drawings when she was there. Um, Rob at the Barnes Graham Trust can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think there are only one, one or two that we think are definitely drawings. So if I see you using it, I will say don't use that. Okay. Um, not everything is just as yeah. I've gone through and enhanced all these, and so they should be nice and sharp. I'm, I'm slightly less keen. See that? See in that one you're packed on. We can see the picture frame as well. Yeah. I'm slightly less keen on the picture frame. Yeah. And this, what we're doing here is we're trying to make the audience feel as if they are in the Alps, but not by seeing pictures of the Alps, by seeing Willie paintings. Okay. This a drawing. Yeah, don't use that one. Yeah. And if you go back a bit, do you want to and don't use that one here. The ones with the holes, don't use here. Don't use that that close up here. Yeah, okay. 
Uh, so good. Do you want me to tell you that you just passed one of the drawings? Do you want me to tell? No, it doesn't matter. No, no, it's fine. I mean, that's fine. Uh... Loads of pictures here, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, why don't we just start here? Yeah. And I'd, first of all, I thought maybe we should sequence from the you know, more the more turquoise pictures to the browner pictures, but I don't think so. I think this should be a complete mix of. I know these are coming from very different periods. It's got different styles, different colors. Some feel like daytime, some feel like nighttime, but that's all good. No, so what I can do is I can just, um, you know, I think I just put some in and then if it becomes too, I don't know, jumpy or too harmonious, I can just switch some out, you know? Yeah, yeah. I can just... I think the question is how long should each one be up? Because it shouldn't be too, we don't want to make people feel dizzy, obviously, you know, there should be an, enough time to drink in the image before you cut to the next image. Yeah. So I don't know, what do you think? <clears throat> I don't know. Let's... I've said something like five, I don't know, you'll see. So that was you dra dragging four different images onto the four different um, video tracks, wasn't it? And then you're going to shrink each down to put them in the quadrants. Yeah. This is the kind of stuff computer loves. Lots of big images on the screen at once. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're being sucky. Maybe a bit. This particularly beautiful one, this one, this is the one that I, if I, if I had to own one of her paintings, I would love that one. Well, I hint, hint. Hmm? hint, hint. Yeah, I think the random thing is good, isn't it? You know, you can overthink a montage like this, can't you? Yeah. Remember I mean, it's also like if I just start, like I say, and then I can um, I can just switch them around a bit, take one from from the beginning, and yeah, 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 see, and yeah. Remember when I told you when we were making the I Am Belfast film and I worked with David Holmes and the way he introduced randomness into the choice of music and the choice of uh, layering music. And it's, yeah, you know, again, it's really good not to overthink sometimes something like this, this a, a sequence like this. Yeah. And like sometimes really nice things can happen that way. Yeah. I mean, there won't be big surprise with us. I just heard like, Rick Rubin, you know, that great music yes. producer. Yeah. He was talking about this band. And like, it seems a bit random, but it's almost like a... Like, basically, they had a song, and then they had this bridge section, and they didn't know what <laughs> lyrics to use. Yeah. He just said them, or just, you know, there's a live... Like, I've, he had lots of books in the room. He's just like, just take, take any book and open it up. Yeah. And mm -hmm. that the lyrics fit perfectly yeah. that they just yeah. randomly found that way. Yeah. It seems a bit like, like, I don't know. I think, I don't know. It can just add a, add a meaning that you didn't intend, but kind of fits really nicely. And then it becomes something else. Absolutely. You know, that's the way David Bowie worked when he was, he would write lyrics, chop them up and rearrange them almost semi-randomly, you know, and the, those kind of collisions and connections and <clears throat> yeah, you want that. So obviously we're just doing this very rough. Yeah. And this I'm sure it's not the most exciting thing to watch, but it needs to be done. Yeah, it's gonna take a while this sequence, isn't it? I 
interesting when you're when you're using music that's got lots of beats and percussion in it you know it, it's tempting to cut on the beat isn't it or but in linda's music there aren't many beats you know so it's slightly more dreamlike which is of course very useful for us yeah I should say, if anybody's watching on YouTube, and um, we are not watching YouTube, <laughs> of course, because we're doing this. So if you're sending in questions or comments, unfortunately, we are not seeing them. Sorry about that. You can, if you have anything specifically, I've got my phone here. So if you are on Twitter, you can send me a question or a comment on Twitter, uh, which is, I am at at Mark Cousins Film. And I noticed that WhatsApp is down. And so I, I don't know if it's fixed yet, but WhatsApp was down this morning. So people have piled onto Twitter for that reason. <laughs> That music goes so well, doesn't it? I thought that was going to be a bit too, too much of the same thing, but it's quite nice actually looking at it. Huh? And I then it's also like, I mean, it will be not right next to each other. Huh? You need yes. to look around. Yes. No, I think that's good. And then you'll start to mix it up, won't you? And as you said, you won't. We don't want to cut all four of them away at the same time, Timo. You'll take one of them away yeah, and yeah. replace it, and so it starts to be really kind of funky. Yeah. No, but it's nice to start with those four versions of the same thing. It's almost like a kind of fly, you know, like a fly when it looks at the world, it sees, I don't know, thing sees the same thing through different lenses. It's like looking at the same painting with a telephoto lens and a close-up lens and different. <clears throat> It will be fascinating because that's the individual warp and weft or whatever that is, it's, those words are of the canvas, isn't it? So seeing that huge should be very interesting. The idea for this. You said it's one minute, 50 seconds of music. Is that right? Yeah. I think you might need to use all of that for this montage. Okay. I took my cold, you know, I've got a cold. I took my tablets at seven o'clock this morning. Do you think I can take more? No, I took them at half six, half six. Yeah, I can take more cold tablets. I mean, it's more about, I think, the 24-hour cycle, isn't it? Yeah, okay, I'm going to take some more. <clears throat>
yeah, I was going to say, I had the idea, see these big close-ups, Timo? I had the idea of photographing her pictures super, super close up with Gemma Thorpe because I saw a documentary on Hokusai, the, you know, the uh, Japanese artist in the British Museum had photographed his paintings with an 8K camera. And I thought, oh, we could do that. Uh, and so we did. And this is, you know, what we're seeing here. Nobody in the world, including Willie, will have seen these paintings in this kind of detail. There's, it's too close for the human eye. <coughs> well, maybe, yeah. maybe Rob and Cassia at the Barnes Graham Trust, if they went with a micro, a micro, not a microscope, what do you call it, a magnifying glass. But basically, this is closer than you look at that. That's nice. <coughs> You make me cough now. <coughs> I think I've given you my cold via Zoom. Yeah. Yep. It's a lovely one, isn't it? See the scratches? You know, she talks about the transparency and she felt she could see through the glass, the glass here and you can see that kind of, there are, there are thin layers of paint and scratching and things, a real sense of transparency. The Barnes Grand Trust are saying that they're totally hooked on watching us edit. Mm. Oh, and if you're what if you're watching Barnes Graham Trust, I think there's a Cassia. <laughs> Timo's name is Timo Langer. You've got a Timo Werner. <laughs> I've got Timo Werner. What? You've 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 been called Timo Werner. Yeah. Um, but I, I think you should change your name to Timo Werner. <laughs> It is a Timo Werner. He's a footballer. All right. Okay. Well, maybe, maybe, yeah, you should change your name. That's all right. I've got this jersey. I could put it on. <laughs> e number one. <laughs> and I'm glad that you've got in that that uh, screen four there. You've got. Her, well, you've got a Willie's auto, uh, signature at the bottom, haven't you? Because that gives it a sense of scale. When people are in the room and they'll see that the signature is really big, they'll think, wow, these are big blow ups. That's nice. See, the brown and the blue together is really nice. Look at those textures. Then maybe, I mean, you would think the other one changes now, but maybe we leave that and change another one. Sure. I think just, First. this is, you know, just to really improvise here. No yeah. rules kind of thing. Somebody's just said on Twitter, the ski lifts in Grindelwald are great for long tracking shots. Yes, who said that? Nick, yes, you're right. However, if you've got huge vertigo like me, then <laughs> I cannot do those <laughs> tracking shots. Every I stand on the ground and film the ski lifts from the ground. Nice.
That's a particularly nice one, I think. Some of them you could really, really see the canvas pet textures, you know. And they were shot on like really, like Gemma shot them like really high resolution. And then I put them through a, a, a piece of software to make them, you know, even sharper. So hopefully they'll be super sharp. They're very big. Very big. Yeah, that's what we want. Okay, so oh, it's not right. That's number three, Timo. Right, this is where the brain goes. Right. You started today saying it's really quite, it's not all that complicated. Yeah, it is before you asked me to do this. <laughs> I think you're going to regret saying that. Because it is, I was, my brain was really quite tired last night. Uh, what have I done? And as well as the um, music, will you keep that ice melting thing going, Timo? Or, oh, ooh, either the ice melting or do you remember Anya? I think so, like the music, because it's, it's the mix of all of them. I think yes. it's quite powerful. So yes, it might be, uh, I don't know. If you want the ice melting or something, it needs to be quite loud. Well, you can try it, but. Or we could, I think we do need something else in there to give it a, a sense of space. You know, wait, wait, what the, of course, as you know, the metaphor here is that we're in a kind of cave, but it's the cave of her own head, her own imagination, her own psyche, et cetera. So I'm just thinking that, you know how much I love music on top of music. So I wonder if at some point, as well as like a huge Scotland all track five, which you're playing at some point, if you could introduce one of the Linda's other things, which is one of, you know, the neurons as well. At some point, have a listen and see if you can bring in a bit of neurons to brain. It's called number six brain, just neurons. Okay. Oh man, I already made a mess here. So, one, two, that's four, not three, and that's three, not four. So, four, three, Two, one, yes. So fascinating for anybody watching. Timo counting backwards from four. <laughs> That's what editors do, they count. Um, okay. And that's wrong. <clears throat> Oh dear. All right, let's start here again. Let's tell that. So. Okay, that's right. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, those ones are good. See, th th those bluer ones are particularly good, Timo. Like those kind of, yeah, that, those kind of things are. Mm. 
It's just, I, I always find that scale, you just have to keep in mind, don't you, the scale of what we're doing, the, it's going to be huge screens. Did you, did you know that story about Walter Murch, the editor, and what he used to do? Did you tell me that? Where he would put a little, like, toy person beside the edit screen to remind him the scale of the image? No. He, those of you are watching, if you're watching, you'll know that Walter, the brilliant editor, he did things like Apocalypse Now. But in order to remind himself that, he, that, this, that the films would be on the big screen, he would put a tiny little toy. That. In fact, I think I think that I do. When I was when I was planning like a huge Scotland, I bought <coughs> little creatures. This, yeah, and put them. I put them in um, a black box, so it was to try and imagine the scale of it. Is it lunchtime yet? No, not quite. It's not even close to lunchtime yet. And we're going to start stop at 12 today. Is that right, Timo? Yeah. Yes, please. So if, if anybody's watching, we're going to finish a little earlier at 12 o'clock and then we'll pick up again at 1.30. So we're going to have a longer lunch break. I don't know why this is not working. What am I doing wrong? <sighs> Thought I could automate the process a bit, but it doesn't want to do it. That's right now. It's three, but and I still need to. Yeah, it would be nice if you could just ask the computer to shuffle them, couldn't it? You know, because that's sort of what you're doing in a way, shuffling. Yeah. And like it's yeah. It's like shuffle on Spotify, isn't it? When you have a moment, Timo, when you're finished doing something, I'd like to point you to one particularly good picture to get it in reasonably soon. Yeah. <clears throat> and it's a way to come. These are very 
the the screen one, three and four here are very light. You see the way that the paint is extremely thin and you can see pencil through paint. It's almost like washes, which is quite contrasty contrast to those <clears throat> more solid marks. So yeah, no, this is probably incredibly boring to watch, but I need to, this is really where I need to make sure everything's on the right uh, layer, because otherwise it's going to be a nightmare when we, it's still, it's basically not going to work if we put it all together after separating it. So... What? Are you worried about putting pictures on a uh, on a layer where you have text? Is that the problem or what? No, it's just I need to make sure that I have put the images in the right quadrant, basically. All oh, right, okay. Yep. Three, four. I think this is all fine. This is one, <laughs> two. Three, four, three. Okay, that should be fine. Oh dear, now we go on here. Five minutes. Five minutes to render. That's because the files are quite big, is that right? They're huge, yeah. When it's rendering, can you look into the other folders? And uh, no. No. <coughs> okay. I could speed it up a bit. Won't be quite five minutes. It was amazing, you know, Rob from the Trust and I have traveled to various locations where Willie worked in painting and in painting. And it was amazing to go and stand in the exact spots where she stood and see what caught her eye, you know, and she had such an unconventional eye. People, painters would normally go and paint a big vista or a dramatic scene or something. And she would ignore a lot of that and paint something at her feet, you know, a grid or a rock formation or a pattern of geology or something, you know, it's brilliant to see someone looking so uniquely. Yeah. <clears throat> There's something quite eerie about standing in someone where someone, I mean, it, for obvious reasons, but I remember when I was in Dallas and I stood where Zabruda filmed Kennedy. Oh, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. It felt really good, cool. like they, they have marked the exact spot, and obviously, yeah, that's quite like you will have filmed in a 50 millimeter lens, which is what yeah. our eyes are quite accustomed to, yeah. or like, like yeah. as closest to our eyes. So when you looked up, you could see the film almost. So it was like, Ugh. it was a bit, it was a bit like a like almost like a VR experience or yeah. something. Yeah, that's what was so exciting about shooting the story of film and Odyssey, you know, because going to India and in the exact village where Satyajit Ray shot Butter Punch, yeah. you know, yeah. going, standing in the exact place where the famous Lauren Hardy music box film was made, you know, they, I've always been very interested in that, you know, I've, I love the writer George Steiner, and he wrote that book called Real Presences, and it's about that kind of thing, you know, standing some, you know, a place that is unique in the world, and no other place is like it. And um, yeah, you feel as if <clears throat> you feel as if you're the center of something, which is really good. I think Willie felt as if. She was suddenly, well, this is exactly what we're, we've just said in the script, actually, but to say the, I, there it is, funny, I was at the center of a kind of hemorrhage, and before that we say, the mountains curved around us, so that's exactly the feeling, you know, hyper subjectivity. <clears throat>
is working, it is going to work, isn't it? And I like the rhythm of it. It's not like some pictures are up for a shorter time and some for a longer time. That's good as well. Yeah. Um... <laughs> Linda's music is fantastic. And when you have a moment, I'd like you to I'd like to show you the picture, Timo, that I'd love to get in quite soon. Yeah, let's do it now. Okay, so we agreed that what you would do is just show me all the thumbnails and I could, is that what you're going to do? I can, yeah. Mm -hmm. Or if you... I mean, I've got the name of it, but as you say, the names are all very similar. Yeah, which folder is it? It's in close-ups of paintings folder. Yeah. And maybe there's not that many if you tell me beginning, middle, or end kind of thing. Uh, it's in, it's one, it's... Uh, before the oh see that one they are just parked on by the way if you go back that sort of that I think we need to get that in quite soon if you haven't because it's really kind of cave like moment you know it looks if you're looking in a cave so that should come in soon but the one I'm particularly thinking of is about five before that or six before that. Oh, it seems to be in a different order. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's it. See that one? That one, Timo, is really good. So if you can get that one in, and it's close up in, which is the next one, I think they... This one. At this. one those two. Because the reason why I'm suggesting those two is, see how monumental they are? They look like big lumps of granite almost, whereas what you've just put in is the opposite. Uh, the previous shots you've just added are very sort of diaphanous and uh, translucent. And so that contrasts to show that she went from layers of paint that could be glimpsed through other layers to something really solid and blocky. Yep. So yeah, those would be great contrast to what you've just put in. <laughs> That's a lovely combination. See little hints of, sort of mustard colored there. Look at look at that. That's really interesting.
anybody's just tuning into the YouTube thing, what we're trying to do here is <coughs> give the audience a sense of being in the Alps, really. Uh, the audience in Fruit Market will be surrounded by four very large screens, and on each screen, you get, and it'll be a dark room, so the only light in the room will be coming from these pictures. But instead of using actual pictures of the Alps, we're using Wilhelmina Barnes-Grain's paintings of the glacier in the Alps. So you know when you try to evoke something at one remove, you don't say it explicitly, but you say it um, by um, a kind of from a distance. What you hope, I, I, I remember talking to Paul Schrader, you know, the, the, who, who wrote Taxi Driver and Raging Bull, etc. And he talked about the poles of a, the, 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 the negative and positive poles of a battery and hoping that a spark will jump. And I think that that's what you want. Uh, you want a spark to jump. So we here we want people to be standing like that top left image you're looking at now and to think, wow, that's a cave, but it isn't a cave. It's just a tiny little moment in a painting. And so, so the spark jumps between Willie's painting and the world that they're trying to describe or evoke, which is the glaciers. So avoid the circle, Timo, if possible. Sure. I'm going to listen to this other piece of music of Linda's that I like and the just neurons and see whether I think it is. Yeah. Um, at some point, Timo, uh, you, if you could try to layer in that second piece of Linda music, which is called Brain Just Neurons. Yeah on top of or below the main piece that we're listening to here.
What's that you're dragging onto them, Timo? It's just a crop, so I can okay. basically come in with lots of extra space. Yeah. So I just then need to And yeah, my brain <laughs> again did the wrong thing. <laughs> Curse that's number four, you idiot. Okay. Oof. All right, so sorry, I need to do another brain check. One, two, three, and four. Obviously, even as long as you do these roughly, Timo, because we'll cover. Yeah, no, it's just, it's just a bit ugly there. That yeah. wasn't. Um, but I think we can li live with those little things because we know it's only approximate. Yeah. At this point, it's more just to see. For me, it's this is the first time that I'm seeing these contrasting images, you know, sitting on the same frame together and seeing how they speak to each other, you know, and the soft structures and the hard structures and the thin structures and the thick structures. And I think it's good. Another, re another one of the influences for this was Remember Douglas Gordon slowed cycle, Hitchcock cycle down to 24 hours. Mm. I really like the fact that, you know, you can take an artwork and if you look at it in such detail, it turns into something else before your eyes, you know, and that's part of the, I think the inspiration for this. Okay. It's not too bad. I know it's taking a long time, but we're kind of halfway there. Good. And will you try this this other music to, to bleed it to drift it in, Timo? Yeah. It's number six, brain just neurons. And you want it on top of everything, yeah? Yeah, I think so. Just to add, because the, we've got this deep cello and we've got this cavernous type of noise, but we need something sort of crackly uh, within it to, to yeah. you know, so we've got these big, we've got big, big, big sound and we need tiny sound as well. Sorry, brain neurons, yeah, not brain just neurons. Uh, brain, just... brain just neurons, I think, because it's the one that's just got crackle. Yeah, some of those do you only you you yeah? No, we don't ideally we don't want them yong yong yong. We just need moments of it. It doesn't need to stretch across the whole of minute 50 or anything, just like moments of crackle. Okay.
Uh, on all tracks, yeah? Um, yes. I just had an email from via my agent from a 16 year old in Italy who um, is just saying I live in Milano. I was stuck at home in quarantine two years ago, became passionate about cinema. And then this person, I won't name them, I won't, I won't say too much about them. Um, they saw a story of film and it changed their life. It made them feel as if they were in the first Lumiere screenings. It's very nice, isn't it? Very nice. Our films have inspired this person in so many ways. This this message is my gratitude to you. How lovely. Thank you for your sincere passion. You really, you truly made me see cinema in the world in a new way. How lovely. Thank you. So we should get to the end of this sequence by midday then, yeah? I think so. We're not that far off. No. Yeah, so if you have more images that you definitely want. Yes, I do. Surprise, um, surprise. Maybe, maybe you want to start calling them out and then... Okay. Um, well, I... Kind of getting, yeah. Yeah, I think we should go for one of the big close-ups. Uh, so... If you go into, I can just now, can, but okay, that's right. Um, if you if you have a mental note of all the ones you want already, great. Then maybe we just once or how many more like, have we collect got, them whenever? How many more have we got room for? About another eight or something like that. I mean, we have we still have room. It's just yeah. you know, let's make sure you, the ones that you want die in, and then yeah, find other ones if we need them. Yeah. <clears throat> God, struggling there. Big images, yeah. There's one of the one of those TIFF images is ridiculously big. Yeah. 
The big is good. It means it'll look nice on the huge screen, which is what we want. When's my headache going to go away? Do you know? Um, I don't know. I hope it's not too bad. It's just that the sort of headache you get when you've got a cold, you know what it is? Yeah. What have you taken so far? I have taken Boots, Boots Maximum Strength Cold and Flu Relief. Caffeine, I guess that's paracetamol. the maximum you can do. Yeah. Caffeine, I mean, if paracetamol. you feel really shit, you could take ibuprofen on top of it, you know? Okay, yeah. I'll survive. Still rendering, yes. Yeah, almost done. Almost done. Okay, let's find those images. Okay, so almost done. All right, so first of all, in the London and Wolverhampton folder, Timo. Yep. Uh, rule. <coughs> towards the beginning of that folder. Yes, so these ones, have you used any of these ones yet? This one's particularly, this is the Arts, no. this is the Arts Council one, so it's particularly nice. So any of those, those are all like, if you take in a, a, some of those, at least they're particularly good ones. And also, <clears throat> these are some of the ones with the clearest mark making on them, very sharp edge bits. That one you're on is particularly lovely. Oh, ooh, has that got a, ooh, ooh. Oh. Ooh, they, they have got little um, artifacts on the bottom of them. Do you notice that? So yeah. I'm, I'm gonna have to, let me just, that one I particularly like. So I'm going to remove the artifact and email it to you in a moment, okay? I mean, I could zoom in a little bit. Uh, oh yeah, do that instead. Yeah, just zoom. Don't lose the right hand side of it, Timo, if you know what I mean. Just lose the left and the bottom. Yeah. It's a lovely image there. The contrast with the complexity of the left side with the simplicity of that big slab of turquoise on the right side is very good. <laughs> This is the most aquatic one, you know, because I think the wide shot of this Arts Council image really looks like a fish. And the, you feel as if you're seeing into the belly of the whale kind of thing. And, you know, when you're up on the glacier, you really feel that it's like a whale. So it's really, she's really getting to something here.
so interesting to see the contrast between very linear arts council one a turquoise one and the much browner one it's from swiss cottage and much browner more slabby you know If you're watching this on YouTube, you'll see that this is the most, the slowest, most laborious bit of the editing process that we've done so far. <clears throat> but I think in the final installation, this will be one of the most striking bits because this is pure imagery and music. And this is really the first time that people will have had a chance in this installation to be completely surrounded by Willie's art. <clears throat> and I think what we're hoping is people will see continuities and discontinuities. You know, if you look even on the screen now, you're seeing similar ship shapes in some way. Like in the bottom right there, it looks like, oh, it's just gone. The bottom right there, it looks like um, the pyramids of Giza. Uh, and, but you're seeing so similar peaks, almost like horizon peaks and then curves and desert-like structures. But then you're seeing, you know, like the tail of a fish at times. And so we really hope that people looking at these will start to notice their own continuities and discontinuities between Willie's treatments of these. Like, look at those wedges there, gorgeous curves. and geometry of it all and the mathematics she was very interested in mathematics and yeah we don't spell any of this out of course we just in an almost random way present these images in, in four screens and see how they speak to each other definitely very pyramids that thing the right one of the things that I feel is that there's a nighttime quality to a lot of these paintings that Willie did. She climbed the glacier, of course, during the day. It was May in the in in Switzerland, so it was very bright. Uh, but I feel that once the, once the paintings were filtered through her imagination, that they became more nighttime and. I was talking to Rob at the trust, the Wilhelmina Barnes Graham Trust about this, and he and Cassia, I think, were, they, they reckon that there was overpainting in some way, and some of the skies perhaps could have been darkened, who knows. But whatever the effect, whatever the process was, you get to a point where a daytime experience becomes not only more, not only geometric, but um, dreamlike almost like a kind of David Lynch experience in some ways. And that's part of the appeal of these pictures. They are in an in, in-between state, you could say, between description and geometry, <clears throat> day and night. It's probably rubbish what I just said there. <laughs> but I'm filling time when Timo does his bit. That's quite that too similar, you think? No, no, that's nice. I like having those two. <clears throat> Obviously, one's just a close up of the other, but I think that kind of thing, again, that kind of, when you put those two, like both of them are close ups, right? But when you put them together, you think, makes you think like how close can we go in these pictures you know but if you go really close do you see the pyramids of Giza it's sort of you know do you start to see many little 
alpine landscapes and horizons and things? And I think the answer is yes, you do. Yep. Uh, have you got any more favorite ones? Yes, I do. Um, right, now, now is the time because we're getting there. Okay, good. Well, back in the London and Wolverhampton um, folder, right towards the end. Mm, yeah, so after, if, if you go backwards from the very end, about the yeah, see that uh, that one I like it because you can see the texture so much, Timo. And the one before it is this the, one, yeah. No, not the back of the canvas. Sorry, the um, if you go that one is very good. Yeah. And the one before that, and the one before that, they're all very good. They're particularly sharp. So any of those, you know, all of those are good. So hungry. And I've got almost no food in the house either. Well, you live in a very isolated place, I'm sure. <laughs> um, I used that one before. Oh, did you? Okay. I used these three already. Oh, did you? Okay. <laughs> Well then, <coughs> a little earlier in that, that there's some very turquoisey ones. I don't know if you've used the very, if you go backwards from there. Uh, I like that. See, you know what I was talking about? Nighttime. Look at how night that looks like. You know, oh yeah, isn't it? Let's avoid the circley ones because we need them for later. I like that one as well. Yeah, I like them all. Yeah. 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 It really works to see them all combined in this way. And then this afternoon, we're back to dialogue. We've got quite a lot of dialogue coming up between older Willie and younger Willie. <coughs> I think we're not going to use, you know, we've got some photographs of the real Willie climbing the glaciers, but I think we shouldn't use them here in this, this installation because that'll take us sort of outside the experience in some way, you know, and we need to feel more that we're inside her head, looking out through her eyes, mm. you know, rather than looking at her, you know. Yeah. Liz Truss has told 
Rishi Sunak to be bold. Who has what? Liz Truss has, has told the new prime minister to be bold. I think she took care of that one already. Yeah. Everybody's going to listen to her advice because she yeah. ha handled her time in office so splendidly. It was sort of exemplary, wasn't it, what she did? She didn't put a foot wrong. Yep. Just resigned because she needed time with the family. Yeah. It's nice, those four. So that is coming up to eight minutes, Timo, yes? Yeah, well, not quite, but seven and a half we're kind of at at the moment yeah. yeah and by the time we finish this sequence it it'll be it will be 7 40 or something okay that's pretty good i mean it's i mean i guessed that this would be 15 minutes but we should make it exactly 15 minutes so um i think we're yeah i think we're on schedule it looks a bit right we've got about half the story still to tell And so if that, we might have to tweak it a bit. Oh, we are, in fact, we're almost, this is the script, we're almost exactly halfway in the script. So that's good. And then the final sequence, we'll to leave room for the credits and the final sequence, which will be about what has happened to the gas area. You know, that's an environmental bit. And um, it'll, you know, it needs probably 30 seconds or a bit more as well pretty close good i mean i think what we're going to do is put a clock at the end because you know when you're in a gallery and you've just walked in and you've seen the end of the of an installation you think when it, when's it going to start again so we might have to put a countdown five four three two one before you know something like that but that would be easy to do i think Can't wait to see this like on big screens, eh? And hear it. Yeah. Yeah. It one. is. It is a bit. Yeah. It, like we said, it is very. You have to. You have to do a lot of imagine imagination. Yeah. Uh, imaginary work really with this, and. Uh, <coughs> I mean, I guess it's. 
I mean, this is very different to like a normal film or whatever, but that's what you do, isn't it? Like, like when a writer writes something, he has pictures in his head. When a director reads something, he has pictures in his head, and we just need to keep our need need to keep that dark room in our head. Absolutely, yeah, it's a thing. When you have an idea, and sometimes often the idea comes in a flash, like in an instant, and then you can't get rid of it, you know, and so that's. Then you have to drive, drive, drive towards making it a reality, you know. And I think it's, I, lo I love that, you know, the fact that you can um, pre see something, you know, you can see it before it exists. Yeah. I think that's what happened, happens here. That's what's happened with this installation. You know, I could see it and feel it. Uh, and yeah. Then, you know, and of course, it could be rubbish. <laughs> It could be rubbish, but uh, hopefully not. But um, I remember talking to Terence Davis about this, you know, and Distant Voice is still alive. And he said, I could see the whole thing. He could feel it. He could play it in his head before he'd shot any of it. You know, and it's, it's exciting. Yeah. That's quite, quite, um, quite a lot of feeling going on in there. Yeah. I mean, it's, I mean, it's just a lot of to... If all of that was already in his head, that's quite mm -hmm. extraordinary. Yeah. I was talking to, you know, the, the, I was talking to a neuroscientist, David Eagleman, that his name is, yeah, and he, he was telling me that, I hadn't really heard this before, but there's a term for people who can hyper-visualize something. Um, right. I don't remember what the word is. And then there are people who are the opposite, who don't have any mental pictures at all. And I'm certainly on, on the former side of that, you know, that I can, I just sort of feel slightly invaded by imagery in some way, mental imagery, you know? Yeah. But, it's crazy, some stuff that, like, if you're, like, I saw, like, this, this, this woman I recently um, heard about, and she never forgets a face. Have you heard yes, that before? Yes, I have heard there's a term for that as well, isn't there? Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. What goes on in some brains, isn't it? Yeah. This is lovely. You know, yesterday, what we were editing yesterday, there was quite a bit of silence, Timo, but to go from that all, that silence or almost silence to this really full music, you know, filling the whole room, I think would be very good. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, and the music is this. This is the music fading itself out. You're not fading it out, isn't that right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so four more. Um. Well, or maybe, maybe four is too much. I mean, should we? Let's watch it maybe, and then yeah. <coughs> see whether see whether the pace is right and stuff. Yeah. Okay, go for it.
going too long, isn't it? Don't mind. There was one. There was one where you cut two images at the same time. Do you see it back a little bit? Yeah. Yeah. Did you like that double two both at the same time? I didn't mind it once. Yes. Yeah, that, yeah, as long as you don't do that too often. But so far, I'm really liking it. I don't mind the fact that that one was on the bottom was on for a long time either. I just like the fact that there's no pattern here. Okay. I just want to... Any more, Timo, or should we just go to the four willies, the two older and two younger? Or okay, yes, yeah. she's, she's about to say, um, she's about to say it was like my brain, so that'll be very nice, you know, because we've sort of been looking at the Alps here, but also like mental mental imagery as well. So I yeah. was like my brain, I seemed to see my brain, the glacier was, and then both older and younger women say me. Uh, so would it work to cut to her or? It's funny, just because the music's fading here, I just wonder. Cut to four willies, yeah. Maybe cut to black. Yeah, then... cut to black, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, nice. Yeah. And then you could bring in your first line of dialogue. It was like my brain. That really works as a piece of storytelling. I think the audience has a, time, a chance really to be in this mental state, this sort of valley, you know, this kind of psychic valley. And then she here she comes, she's popping up and saying, it was like, the glacier was me. It was the structures I'd long seen. That's good. It was the structures I'd long seen. That's right, I think. So um, how many lines are we saying now? Quite a few, Timo. Uh, it was like my brain. I seem That's to right. see, see my one, two, three, four, five, six. I mean, there's quite a bit coming up now. I have dialogue. And we just have that over their picture? I think so, yeah. It was like my brain is the younger Willie speaking.
It's funny when I had the idea for this installation, I didn't think of using, you know, a conversation between younger and older Willie, but I think it's sort of necessary in a way, you know. It gives it a, a structure. Mm -hmm. It was like my brain. I seem to see my brain. Oh, so maybe once younger Willie starts speaking, Timo, we should cut older Willie off because younger Willie has four lines here. Or So once she starts spe speaking, let's get rid of older Willie for a moment. And just leave it black? Or? Yes, leave it black on the other two, on screen one and four. Okay. And are you doing these dialogues on just on one screen or are you gonna, we just need them on one, do we? Yeah. I think so, yeah. So yeah. It was like my brain, I seemed to see my brain. Just a reminder, we've got this image in color. At some point, it would be nice to use it just as a sort of change of mood, but we could do that a little later, I think. That's <clears throat> a bit fast, maybe. Maybe a little bit fast. I, and the timing isn't quite right there between when the title comes up and when older Willie disappears. I think there needs to be a gap. Will, Willie, older Willie should disappear a little earlier, I think. Okay. So she's gone. We notice her absence. Then our eye goes across to younger Willie and she speaks. Yeah. Yeah, very nice. Um, I seem to see my brain. Now, this is a little moment. You know, Anya has put some new breathing in the drop box, Timo. Okay, yeah. Would it take you long to access that? No, probably not. Okay. Because after that music, I don't think we want any more music for a little bit, but we do want to hear subjectivity, i.e. breathing. Okay. Mm, I think she put everything online again. Right. Okay, so... Uh, well, why don't you, for the time being then, why don't you use a bit more of that second bit of breathing that I gave you yesterday? What did she say to you she put online? Uh, so she said, so uh, she had sent us one piece of audio called breath, but she's now added more breathing. That's the only new <coughs> thing in the Dropbox, she said. But if you if it's hard to find our access, you can... No, I, I see it. No, like, yeah, there's a breath too now. Yeah. There's breath too. Okay, so just. Okay, yeah. A little bit of that, I think. 
And I think she's also got a little bit of kind of mouth noise, that kind of something like that. So a little bit of presence just is what we need here. Don't see that. But... <clears throat> okay, so this is the new breath. Okay. Oh, quite like that. It's like she's out of breath. Okay, I like that, Timon. So maybe, you know, where we brought in the four pictures of, as the music fades, maybe you should bring in a little bit of that breathing before younger Willie says, it was like my brain. Okay. It's almost as if she's just climbed the mountain. Yep. Um, on all screens. Uh, yeah, we're seeing her on all four, aren't we? Yes, on all four. And then I guess we could be, be fancy and when older Willie goes away. Cut the audio from those two screens. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Good idea. We are thinking the same thoughts. It's almost like we've been working together before. Yeah. E do 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 do. <laughs> it's going to work. <clears throat> yeah. Uh... So have them on a bit longer? Yes, that's exactly what I was thinking. Keep them on a bit longer and shift the, you know, the first next line of dialogue down a bit. What am I doing? I don't know what you're doing. I have no idea. Yep, that's going to work.
still too a bit too fast, huh? Yeah. And I think actually, unusually, normally I prefer cuts, as you know, Timo, but I think maybe the older Willie should sort of, you know, do a quick fade to black rather than a hard cut because of what the music's doing, etc. Okay. Ah, oh, Jesus, Jesus. <laughs> and you got a, and you've got a cold as well. <laughs> a bit of a snuffle Nice to go from music suddenly to this very intimate breathing. <clears throat> You've just been up a hill, you're breathing a lot, you've put your nose is probably running. Yeah, I like it. It, sh it probably shouldn't be, it should be a little lower, but I think it's real and it's a sense of, yeah. I don't know, you sure? Uh, if it's lower, I think it's, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's, I don't think it's breaking the spell here, to be honest, which is the worry, but I don't think it is. Okay. And if you're watching on YouTube and you wonder what we're talking about, we're talking about that sort of sm that, that snuffly noise that we're hearing uh, in the audio there, but um, I think it's working. <coughs> Yeah, that's nice to bring it down, the graph team on, that's good. <laughs> you seem to see my brain.
You want? Oh, it might be nice of a black, huh? I think it's quite nice of a black. And what I would like at some point very soon is to see a bit more of the film crackle to bring that metaphor back, you know? So I wonder, should we bring it in here? Maybe uh, after, after the caption, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, it's a, that's good. It, it works, doesn't it? Because people have seen a lot of brightness here, and to go back into darkness would be nice. I seem to see my brain, and people really understand that this is the young woman speaking here, don't we? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. we've yeah. really established this, the screen direction here properly. I think so. That's good. And do you want the crackles we used before, or different ones? And um, there's only one. I think we've used just the black and the really black and white ones, huh? I like, I particularly like the windows uh, open. Wait, either of the two, not the very bright white one, but either of the two other ones. In fact, the very black and white one's the best. Uh, the the um the one that begins. Yeah, one nine oh one. Yeah, well, we used it in here, didn't we? Where is Slow mode it by fifty percent or something quite yeah. early on. <coughs> oh, yeah. It is. Oh, look, all four screens. That's what we want. All four screens again. Yeah. So you can just copy that. That's fantastic. It's almost lunchtime, Mark. I know, but I'm just, I think I don't even have a tin of beans in my cupboard. Yeah, but you so got. Can, I've got you, shops. Exactly. <laughs> I could go out and get something. There's a wide concept of shopping. <laughs> beans on toast. Baked potato with haggis, actually. There you go. That's what I fancy. Baked potato with haggis. Oh, nice! Look at that. <laughs> Very nice. So the breathing can the breathing can continue, but no dialogue over that. Yeah, and no no cough. I think no cough. No. Oh, I thought that was you coughing. Is that you? <laughs> no. That was very confusing. <laughs> you should we should send her an email saying thanks for the comments on this. Sound really realistic. <laughs> In... That's lovely. That's going to be so nice. Yeah. Hey, you could watch that for a minute, actually, couldn't you? <laughs> yeah. What's the next line? The glacier was. So the younger Willie says the glacier was, and then both Willies at the same time say me. This is the only time where they both say the same thing at the same moment. So me should probably be on all four screens. I don't think we need to see their pictures, do you? No. Um... <coughs> and maybe we go to silence for that or yes, do something yeah. else, or, yeah. but not I breathing. Silence, no, I think we've had enough breathing. Yeah. The breathing takes us inside her throat, inside her head. But if it goes on too long, it becomes a bit irritating.
So I think that we could stay on black for the, gla the glacier was me, me. It was the structures I'd long seen or longed to see. All of that could be on black. I could, I, th I think it could even go to my God, of course. Okay. Like okay. If maybe we bring music over my God, of course, in. Yes. Well, let's uh, see, because Linda has written something inspired by that bit of the script. So let's just see what she's giving us. But I think that they could all be nice just over black. Yeah, I think so. Because, you know, we're, we've earned it. Yes, yeah, so there's brain cello. And you know who's speaking there, don't you? The glacier was, that's the young Willie. Yeah. Mushroom pizza. With a haggis potato. <laughs> Mushroom pizza with um, anchovies. Would be very nice. So I'm wondering what music should be. This will be the only time that all that the same word appears on all four screens. So I think a just a little pause before the glacier was just a little bit of black in there, Timo. Yeah.
Yep. And again, as you know, this is the younger Willie speaking. It was the structures I'd long seen. Yeah. And then I think because we're going to jump to the older Willie, we're going to need a moment to black just to give the audience time to sort of swivel, <laughs> as it were. Yep. Now, do we do we want more music in here, or do you, are you happy with total silence? You think? I think at the moment I am, but I think yeah. it should come in very soon. Very soon, yeah. Until so we'll keep we'll do we've got two more lines here. Yes, and my God, of course. And then we'll bring in music. Oh uh, no! I just pressed the wrong button. I got don't cry. <laughs> I thought you were a, like a professional, knew what you were doing. Uh, yeah, it's just like the stupid print button is right next to another button I often use. Right. Well, but it was fine. A good editor would know not to do that. <laughs> well, a good editor wouldn't work with you. Oh. Oh. <clears throat> um, yes. So I think music, yeah. So what we've done, what we did at near the start, of course, was to use the high cello and the low cello to evoke the older woman and the younger woman. Um, but that might be a bit tricky here because we're bouncing between dialogue. Isn't that right? Yeah, I mean... I think uh, we don't want we don't want something too ominous here. No, I think I think it can come in though over just over yes. So like the dialogue kind of like is, I mean, what what's the next thing that being said? Uh, so uh, does she say yes? If we say I got her to say yes, my God, of course. Yeah. It was laying and wait for me to entrap me. Yeah. I remember that. So I think we can bring music in and the pictures again and have to then have yeah, to make I think so. I think so. Have to have the text <laughs> over the pictures again. I think I'd like there's a couple of lines here that I don't I wrote a line that says it was like the Mappa Mundi. I have no idea what I meant by that. <laughs> so I'm gonna take it out, Timo. Okay. And Yeah, so we'll take that line out. Um, so should we stop there then for an hour and a half to let you do your business and then meet again at 1.30? Okay.
Did we do that? Okay. Yeah. And so we'll see you at 1.30. And anybody who's watching, thank you for watching this morning. We're going to go away and I'm going to go away and eat an awful lot of food. And then we'll reconvene at 1.30. And when we do that, we've got quite a big, so far we are, we are this far into the story and so this afternoon we're going to pick up in this bit of the story where Willie starts talking about how she sketched the, the thing and then how the, the gassier and how it was an internal structure for her so that will be this afternoon thank you if you watched today and 